The Witches by Roald Dahl. I was having my breakfast this morning, cried the Grand High Witch, and I was looking out the window at the beach. And what am I seeing? You tell me, what am I seeing? I am seeing a revolting sight. I am seeing hundreds, I am seeing thousands of filthy smelly children playing on the sand. It's putting me right up my food. Why have you not got rid of them? Why have you not rubbed them all out, these smelly children? With each word she spoke, flecks of pale blue felt shot from her mouth like little bullets. Hmm. Why have you not dropped them all out? Children smell! They stink out of the world! We do not want these children over here. Do I make myself clear? The bald heads in the audience all nodded vigorously. Hmm, one child a week is no good to me. Is that the best you can do? We'll do better. We'll do much better. Yeah. Great, greatness. Hmm, better is it? Better is no good either. I demand maximum results. So here are my orders. My orders are that every single child in this country shall be rubbed up, squished, squittered, and flattered. <laughs> you till I come back here and. One year's time. Do I make myself clear? A great gasp went up from the audience. I saw all the witches looking at each other with deeply troubled expressions. Be glad your nose is on your face by Jack Polinsky. Be glad your nose is on your face, not pasted on some other place. For if it were <clears throat> where it is not, you might dislike your nose a lot. Imagine if your precious nose were sandwiched in between your toes. That really would not be a treat, for you'd be forced to smell your feet. Your nose would be a source of dread, were it dashed atop your head. It soon would drive you to despair, forever tickled by your head. Within your ear, your nose would be an absolute catastrophe. For when you were obliged to achoo, sneeze, your brain would rattle from the breeze. Your nose instead to thick and thin remains between your eyes and chin, not pasted on some other place. Be glad your nose is on your face. The mind.
of Dr. Doolittle by Hugh Crofting. Once upon a time, when our grandfathers were little children, there was a doctor and his name was Doolittle. John Doolittle, MD. MD means that he was a proper doctor and knew quite a lot. He lived in a little town called Puddleby on the marsh. All the folks, young and old, knew him well by sight. And whenever he walked down the street in his high hat, everyone would say, There goes the doctor! Such a clever man! And the dogs and the children would all run up and follow behind him. And even the crows that lived in the church tower would cow and nod their heads. The house he lived in on the edge of the town was quite small, but his garden was very large. And he had a wide lawn and stone seats and weeping willows hanging over. His sister, Sarah Doolittle, was housekeeper for him, but the doctor looked after the garden himself. He was very fond of animals and kept many kinds of pets, besides the goldfish in the pond at the bottom of his garden. He had rabbits in the pantry, white mice in his piano, a squirrel in the linen closet, and hedgehog in the cellar. He had a cow with a calf too, and an old lame horse, 25 years of age, and chickens, and pigeons, and two lambs, and many other animals. But his favorite pets were Dab Dab the duck, Jip the dog, Gub Gub the baby pig, Polynesia the parrot, and the owl. Doo -doo. What did you consider to be the funniest or most dramatic moment in your pieces? What vocal or physical skills did you use to show that to the audience? The most dramatic part was in the witches, which was my prose. The most dramatic part was when the witches is getting, witch is getting very angry on how the witches are only able to grab one child a week. It is dramatic for me because one child a week is so much. Imagine how many children over the year. I was able to express this through my vocal and physical skills. First of all, the physical one. I used my facial expressions like the cunning one, like and sarcasm, like one child week is no good to me. That means it's not her level. Then the second thing I used was vocal skills in which I did voice modulation like one child a week which portrayed sarcasm. The funniest part was of course in my poem and my mind. In the mind, it was very funny how I was reacting of my nose being in different places. My head, my ear, and even my toes. It was really hilarious for me and I portrayed this with my physical uh, skills. Like I was showing my facial expressions like shocked and screaming and then pinching myself. No, this is a dream. And in the end, being happy again and then holding my nose so it does not run away. That was really funny. Another skill I used was the poem in the poem, which was the vocal skill, in which also I used voice modulation. Like, imagine if your precious nose, now precious, I said, it's like, it's so, it means so much to me. That's what I felt was the most funniest. And this is how I portrayed it. How were your performances different from each other? How did you show that to your imagined audience? My performances are different from each other because both of them are on totally different sides. The witch's performance, which is the prose, is dramatic and has sarcasm and it's meant to make the audience scared away and get goosebumps. Whereas the comedy one, the poem and the, the poem and the mime, they're supposed to be funny, which makes the audience laugh and feel relatable. And I showed this to my imagined audience by making facial expression and by saying different things like, imagine if your precious nose, if, what if it was sandwiched in between your toes? I mean, you would be able to smell everything. That won't be nice. And then in my mind, I was literally showing how everything happened step by step. Like when it was within my ear, whenever I sneezed, my head would ache and my brain would go rattling from here to there. And I even showed dramatic and sarcasm to the audience by giving the cunning look and adding voice modulations and asking rhetorical questions like, 
why have you not got rid of them now that's a rhetorical question too because i know the reason why they've not got rid of them but i still want maximum results so that's how i portrayed it to my audience and i really felt that both of them are different in their ways because the mind the poem they're kind of relatable and they could be true whereas the witches cannot be true as witches really don't exist according to me but in the poem i feel it was really relatable because people will be able to relate it okay this is what i do every day this is where my nose comes in between if i don't have my nose on my face it'll be somewhere else and my work will be spoiled with it and they'll be able to relate it whereas the witches one i think more little kids will be able to relate and they might get scared thinking oh my god witches are real and they take one child a week what if we're one of them so that was the part that i made my audience imagine thank you